Our next guest is a very funny comedian who you know from his Donald Trump impression on The President Show, which is streaming on CBS All Access. His daily talk show, Coffee with Tony, airs weekdays at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. Please welcome back to the show, Anthony Atamanik. How are you, Anthony? Hello. How's it going, Seth? It's going great. You were in Canada uh, shooting What We Do in Shadows, What We Do in the Shadows, a fantastic yeah. show. How is Canada? Uh, well, Canada's cold. Canada's an apartment. <laughs> Canada isn't, Canada is not more than just an apartment, a nondescript apartment that looks, this is where I do my therapy uh, also on Zoom, so it's a very comfortable place for me. Um, I will say that I brought everything I own because I drove here. So I brought my coffee maker, my Xbox, I brought my <laughs> VR system, <laughs> I brought my blood pressure monitor, That's which great, I, man. Don't need. I don't need it. Uh, but uh, yeah, but it's crazy coming here because um, there was nothing at the border because they don't really want you here because you're a diseased American. Uh, it's, I'm very happy that you're there and that you're safe and that you're working. Um, you know, yes. we, uh, I want to talk about, and the last time you were here, we talked about The President's Show, uh, which was a fantastic show where you played Donald Trump. And, and one of the things, one of the ways clips resurface is based on how prescient your show was predicting certain things to happen, up to yeah. and including the fact that you, uh, you were always of the belief that Donald Trump would not concede if he lost an election. Yeah, since the, I think since I did my live show in 2015, that was always <laughs> predicated that he wouldn't, he would never, I, you know, I, listen, I always find this interesting because you have this piece of history with the correspondence dinner with him, and then there's sort of this propulsion that happens and to me, I always look at it and go, how did everyone not see what was going to happen? That, that's, to me, I don't see it as I predicted something. I feel like everyone would just, in such disbelief, that such a just drop-jawed moron could end up being the president and then coast through the job for four years without ever doing anything. I think my favorite part was near the end where people were like, what's the president going to do? The commentator, you know, the news be like, what's the president going to do? It's like, nothing. He hasn't done anything for four years. Well, why is he going to start now? Even the fact that he just, like, slipped out lazily, did one last YMCA, like some, like, aunt at a bar mitzvah. That is, like, the fact that that was his choice near the end was, like, I'm going to project masculinity and control and power by waving my arm, like, pumping my arms in the air. Um, but yeah, so I was not surprised. Sorry, that's way off topic. But uh, I'm not surprised at all that he didn't concede. I mean, obviously, him being, you know, the things we depicted in the show, some of them were very metaphorical. Um, but we did actually predict him coming out the night of the election and saying, I did not lose, I won. And then we had this timeline of like protests and things slowly declining over the next couple of months. And that was like a segment we did in the show. And it's pretty haunting. And I remember when we made it, my producers were like, I don't know, this seems like a little too harsh. I think it's a little too much. And I was like, no, this will be nothing compared to what actually happened. <laughs> so. uh, this was a clip that um, it made a lot of sense that people were posting, but here is um, uh, you as Donald Trump literally being rolled out of the Oval Office. My fellow Americans, and by Americans, I mean only the people who voted for me. I'll never concede. Concession speeches are for losers, and I'm no loser, folks. I disavow this election. I'm staying right behind this desk no matter what. You can't replace me, and definitely not with a woman. Me too? What about me? I'm being evicted like a South African farmer. I won the popular vote. This is white genocide, white genocide. I'll call the Electoral College. They like me. Where's the nuclear football? Give me the nuclear football. What's the number? 8675301. Wow, a truck. <laughs> you know, I you mentioned that I I think that you know news commentators went sort of this cycle of trying to give him a chance over and over again. This will be different. This will be different and you know, your show was a perfect example of no there was no reason to think someone that made it this far in his life being this would ever be something else. Yeah. How does it that you approach the, the impression that made it different from, from everybody else and set it apart? Um, well, you grew up in New England. You have family members that you've known their entire lives are obstinately locked in who they are. 
and that they never change. And that's everywhere, but New England has a particular population of these people. Uh, and so I think that it was, uh, and as a New Englander, I could say that. Um, I approached him uh, like a combination of obstinance that's calcified in, in who he is. And um, I, I guess my goal always in playing him and doing the impression, I don't know why I'm screaming. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> that my reason for doing the impression um, was that uh, I wanted to sort of take Chaplin's The Great Dictator, right? Where you portray the figure, but then you break from that character and like speak truth, but through the image of the character. Because in my view, I knew that a Comedy Central show wasn't going to change the course of history or anything like that. But I thought if at least I can chisel and chip away at that image, uh, which his image is projecting this, you know, thing, big, tough business guy. So I wanted to make him what I think he is, which is like the fifth golden girl. You know, <laughs> he's just like sort of, you know, he's like in a house coat and eating cheesecake, and, you know, yelling at Ma and wondering why, you know, Blanche is home late. Like, that's all he really is. And, and, everyone wants, and everyone wants him to be something else because they're wrapping their identities up in his success. He's just a manifestation of an American narrative that's last, you know, began long before Reagan, but really calcified in Reagan, of this lottery mentality. That if I just play my cards right, I can just be the big success, right? And I think it's uh, broken down our society, and we see the result now, where if everyone's playing scratchers all the time, then yeah, so one person wins a million, but everyone else is just broke with a bunch of like, you know, silver shavings on their on their thumbs and i think that's where we're at we're sort of like the guy who's you know or woman who, at the at the cumberland farms who like has scratched you know 500 tickets and they're just abject so they're willing to believe in some sort of q god you know uh i have uh, more to talk to you about especially uh, in regards to impeachment we'll be right back with more from anthony atamanik